President Kennedy's plane has just arrived after a two-hour, 40-minute flight from El Paso, Texas, where the president spent last night on his western tour. Heading the reception committee is Governor Brown. And Governor Brown, I understand you have an interesting story to tell about how you invited the president here. Well, yes, uh, Dr. Love suggested that he be given a degree down here. And when I went back to Washington, I really went back to get him to take the first honorary degree, except the first honorary degree from the state colleges of our state. You were at a baseball game at We were the time. at the baseball game between Baltimore and Washington, and uh, I sold him on the idea of coming out here. He was just going out and, and inspect the Navy and the maneuvers, and uh, I felt that this would be good for the state colleges and the higher education of our state. It's a great day for the state colleges here. It certainly it? is, and a great day for San Diego. The News and Special Events Department of TV8 presents highlights of President Kennedy's visit to San Diego. Brought to you as a public service by your Douglas Service Station dealers of San Diego County. Here comes the ramp and soon we will see the President of the United States and his party disembark from the presidential Boeing 707. Reception committee is forming ranks here. Others in the plane besides the politicians whom I mentioned are scheduled to be General Maxwell Taylor, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral George Anderson, the chief of naval operations, and here comes the president of the United States, followed by Senator Engel, Lionel Van Derland, the congressman, Secret Service man behind him, Secretary of the Navy, Fred Korth, is on the plane, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Paul Fay, General David Shoup, Commandant of the Marine Corps, there's Pierre Salinger, the Presidential Secretary. The governor now is speaking to the President, followed by Senator Engel and Congressman Van Derland. From the San Diego, Mr. President. The President just said thank you very much as we welcomed him personally to San Diego. He's going to see a large part of San Diego, a large part of the population of San Diego as he proceeds out El Cajon Boulevard to State College, an estimated 250,000 persons. Hi, Lionel. And the motorcade proceeds, followed by uh, Secret Service agents. Total of about a dozen automobiles. Directly behind the president's car is an automobile with Secret Service agents. And behind that is a compact which has in it some of the top newsmen, including Merriman Smith of the United Press, the senior White House correspondent, who says thank you, Mr. President, to wind up the conference, press conference. Other dignitaries, state officials, mayor, zipping right by here, and uh, soon they will be getting out on El Cajon Boulevard. When the motorcade leaves the field here, it'll swing south on Pacific Highway, past the Convair plant, and the airport terminal over on Palm Avenue and onto the new Crosstown Freeway, connecting with Cabrillo Freeway, then north to Washington Street and over to El Cajon Boulevard. The presidential motorcade driving right down the center of the street in our picture. He has not yet arrived at uh, 52nd and El Cajon, where our first stationary camera is located. We hope to have a much steadier picture from the stationary camera, naturally, because it'll be mounted square right on the sidewalk. That's a shot of the helicopter flying over. This, if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, uh, is one of the helicopters that's relaying our TV signal from the uh, mobile camera in the parade route. The uh, police uh, drive by quite frequently, uh, helping the Marines keep the crowd in check. The Marines, by the way, are stationed at 54th and El Cajon, where we have one of the biggest crowds of the route, are stationed about every five or six feet apart, and they've certainly had their hands full in keeping these people back because everybody's leaning forward, pushing to the front, knowing that the president's about to go by. The band in the background, Crawford High School Band, striking up, hoping that the president will be here any moment and uh, wanting to play some uh, stirring march music for him. May I again point out that the picture you see is not from 54th and El Cajon. 
It's from uh, a vantage point about four blocks west of where we are, looking west and seeing the first of the uh, motorcade as it goes by. And that's part of the crowd, the crowd lining the streets, lots of children, the Marines with their hands full. The motorcycle officer, I understand, has been instructed to make sure that everybody does not get out into the street. No reports of whether or not he has uh, run over any toes or not, but uh, doing a good job of keeping them by. Now, the presidential motorcade is approaching 54th and El Cajon. Everybody here is on his feet. The people are beginning to cheer. The people behind me are, of course, quite expectant and uh, quite, uh, quite excited about this occasion. First car coming by our camera at 54th and El Cajon is one of the lead cars in the motorcade. Behind it, the officers on their motorcycles with their red lights blazing. They can see them now, and a cheer is going up from 54 in El Cajon. They're yelling, they're waving. They've all got signs, it seems, and they're all waving their signs. The president looks fit. He's got a great big smile. He's waving to all of the people along, waving to our camera right now, getting a tremendous ovation from the crowd. He looks fine. He's got a big smile on his face. Governor Brown in the car with him, along with Lionel Van Derlin, Senator Claire Engel. In the second car, Glenn Anderson, uh, Attorney General Stanley Mark, Citizen Assemblyman satisfied. Jim Mills, various okay. White House guests. He will be brought directly past helicopter number one, which is his helicopter to be used when he flies to the Marine Corps Recruit Depot. At this point, he will be greeted by Dr. Love, the Chancellor of the State Colleges, Dr. Dunkey, the trustees of the State College System. There we can see now to our glasses the familiar automobile which you have seen through the course of our parade with the President Kennedy, Governor Brown, and uh, there's Senator Engel. There are the three of them. And uh, the President looking, uh, still talking to the people in the car. Now there comes the familiar smile, standing up, and the, the brush of that tear off uh, his forehead. Now the official greeting of the President by Mr. Heilburn who is the chairman of the State College Board of Trustees. There's uh, Alan Sutherland of San Diego saying hello to Lionel Van Derlin. The president certainly looks uh, slim and young. There's Pierre Salinger moving right behind him. This is the official greeting party. Everyone in this stadium now is standing up because many still are unable to see the president because he is standing behind that canvas and of course that is also behind the stage. Conversing there with Mr. Sutherland, Mr. Halbrin, Dr. Dumkey, State College President Love, and now there goes the gown. The gown is being put on the president now. Incidentally, that is a medium size, which is uh, ordered from Champaign, Illinois. The cap and gown, uh, about $115, we understand. The, there are three black stripes on each sleeve of this uh, doctor's gown, and the president taking time for the autograph for the Aztec angels who assisted him. And what a tremendous uh, memory this shall be for these young state college students. And there is the cap which the president will wear. The gold tassel will be on the left side because he has already see, received a number of honorary degrees. And there is President Kennedy, who is Dr. Love, the last in line, as the procession moves on to the stage in front of Dr. Love and President Kennedy are Governor Brown and Dr. Dumkey, who is the Chancellor of the California State Colleges. But obviously, we focus on the important man of the occasion, the honor guard, the Air ROTC. And now, the applause. Now, the hand clapping. 
Now they have seen the president. This is the moment for which they have waited. There is bubbles and flourishes. Now the president has shown his hat. President Love, Governor Brown, Chairman Harbrum, Dr. Lowe, trustees, fellow graduates, ladies and gentlemen. I want to express a very strong sense of appreciation for the honor that uh, you have given to me today to be an instant graduate of this uh, distinguished uh, college is uh, greatly appreciated. And I'm delighted to participate in what is a most important ceremony in the lives of us all. One of the most impressive, if not the most impressive, accomplishments of this uh, great golden state has been the recognition by the citizens of this state of the importance of education as the basis for the maintenance of an effective free society. This fact was recognized in our earliest beginnings at the Massachusetts Bay Colony. But I do not believe that any state in the Union has given more attention in recent years to educating its citizens at the highest level, at the doctoral level, graduate level, in the colleges, state colleges, the junior colleges, the high schools, the grade schools. You recognize that a free society places special burdens upon any free citizen. To govern is to choose, and the ability to make those choices wise and responsible and prudent requires the best of all of us. No country can possibly move ahead, no free society can possibly be sustained unless it has an educated citizen whose qualities of mind and heart permit it to take part in the complicated and increasingly sophisticated decisions that pour not only upon the President and upon the Congress, but upon all the citizens who exercise the ultimate power. We are the privileged, and it should be the ambition of every sea citizen to express and expand that privilege so that all of our countrymen and women share it. Thank you. helicopter taxiing to a stop. You will be met at the helicopter by the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Shoup and General Wade, both of whom you see in the foreground. 
Commandant on the right. General Wade to the left of, on your screen and General Shoup to the right. As a matter of fact, it was uh, a letter from General Shoup to the uh, president that started this 50-mile hike craze, wasn't it? It was for a fact, and uh, the 50-mile hike business started uh, w way back uh, And here comes the president of the United States being saluted and welcomed by the two generals. The 21-gun salute has started. You can hear the 21-gun salute in the background. Pierre Salinger getting off now. Secret Service men with the president. That's General Wade and the president. They are now heading towards the honors area through the archway at Pendleton Hall. The president is going to see quite a bit of activity here at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot where a wonderfully organized series of events is set. President and his escorts are now approaching the archway and will be going through the archway of Pendleton Hall. On the other side of this archway is the lawn area where the Sea School Honor Guard and the Marine Corps Recruit Depot Band are awaiting. The Sea School Honor Guard is um, a group of men that are not very long out of recruit training, isn't that right, Sergeant? That's right. They've just completed recruit training. They go up to Camp Pendleton and uh, have a, several weeks of infantry training and then back down to school. They're a very select group within the Marine Corps. They'll remember this the rest of their lives, won't they? They certainly will. Every Marine on the depot will remember this the rest of their lives. The president has just emerged through the archway and now will cross the roadway and onto the lawn area where the Sea School Honor Guard and the Marine Corps Recruit Depot Band are awaiting. This is a, a beautiful ceremony. Honors uh, are, are a touching uh, event. You, you feel some of the, the uh, enthusiasm by the gunners when they're firing the guns, by the band when they're playing by the troops that are marching by. They always do their best for honors because it's a ceremonial occasion. The smoke that we see there is from the saluting battery, isn't that right? That's right, from the, uh, the smoke from the, uh, the shell. Then the band will troop the line. It will it'll come out front. And uh, now you see the, the president accompanied by General Wade. Now this is a, a cursory inspection of the honor guard. He doesn't actually, as a rule, stop and say anything to anybody. He just makes a trip down the line and, uh, and an honorary inspection of the unit. They're going over so that they will start on the right flank of the uh, honor guard. And as they come back around, in back of them, they'll get back to their first play, their original positions in the front and then the armed band and the honor guard will pass in review in front of them and that will conclude the uh, ceremony now you, you see that the these marines are raising their rifles as the president comes by it is his privilege to stop and inspect any rifle there to see if it's clean it's not necessary we assure you those rifles are clean smartly and neatly executed every one of these maneuvers well these uh, Sea School Marines are, are very sharp. They're used so much on ceremonial events that ceremonies are, are their business. Uh, they're used for uh, much of this sort of thing aboard the ship. And each one of these, as he graduates from this Sea School, will be sent to a carrier or a cruiser, and they will serve in, uh, aboard the ship. Are these families of the servicemen who are in the background? Yes. Those are the uh, wives and children. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the Marines are back there, too, that uh, have no part in today's uh, events. This is perhaps one of the most colorful events of the entire visit of the president here. I, I think so. To us, uh, this, is, this is the highlight of the day. And now he's telling the 
unit uh, commander that he had a, a nice looking outfit that they were all squared away. He's going to go back to maintain to, to back to his original position, and then w uh, you'll hear a command possibly pass and review, and the band will start up and and pass by, and the platoons will follow. The uh, that's as I started to tell you a while ago. That's the general staff of the recruit depot in back of the president and General Wade. His administrative and logistics and intelligence officers, that uh, sort of thing. Now the troops will be passing in review. Right. I, I don't know whether we'll be able to pick up that command or not. This entire ceremony yeah, takes there they go. under 15 minutes, doesn't it? Yes. I believe so, 13, 13 and a half minutes. The Marine Corps Recruit Depot Band in itself is quite a famous aggregation. Oh yes, it appears in public something like 200 times a year off the Recruit Depot. That's in addition to morning uh, flag raising ceremonies here and all of the other uh, recruit graduations, uh, many appearances aboard the, the depot, but other than that, they uh, they go all over Southern California. They march in the Rose Bowl Parade every year, along with the 1st Marine Division Band and the El Toro Band. This is really a beautiful sight. That lawn looks like green velvet, and uh, the trees uh, surrounding it, really a gorgeous sight. The President will certainly appreciate it. Well, I know I'm impressed, but I'm always impressed when I see uh, a Marine in blue uniform. I, I suppose that's our, our trademark. It's uh, not a, an everyday working uniform, certainly, but it is a beautiful uniform. And when you see platoons all neatly aligned in a blue uniform, it's, a, it's, it's an impressive sight to me, and I've been looking at them for a long time. To me, as a civilian, it certainly sends a thrill up my spine to uh, watch this ceremony and to know that the President of the United States is with us right here, observing along with us. I, I, as I said earlier, I don't think that there's a man here, woman either, that will forget this for the rest of their lives. And it means something, uh, possibly a little more to military people in that he's not only our president just as he is the civilians president but he's our boss the other way too commander in chief of all the armed forces the marine corps hymn the famous marine corps hymn as uh, the band passed the president introduced to the general staff now. The man on the extreme left is Colonel Mandeville, the uh, chief of staff of the depot, and uh, then the comptroller, the, the operations officer, the, the looks like, uh, yes, the uh, administrative officer and the intelligence officer. Now the honors ceremony has been completed, and where does the president go from here, Sergeant? Well, uh, the caravan will form from here. It will go through the arcade, back onto the parade field where the helicopters landed a few moments ago, and down the street to receiving barracks where the president will uh, will step into the foot, they, they have yellow footsteps painted for the recruits to stand as they report in. The president will step into a set of those uh, footprints and and uh, will hear and see just what the, the young recruit sees and hears. That's, it's a very impressive uh, thing at receiving barracks. In 56 minutes, they completely change a civilian into at least a uh, most of a Marine. 
<laughs> I think we'll see this also. That's right. Uh, Matter we, of fact, we were it certain. wasn't expected that he would absolutely get out. I mean, you didn't no. figure your schedule on oh, no, his getting the schedule, out of the car. He, he's not scheduled to get out of the car. You just see uh, what our schedule's worth. But we were we felt certain that he would get out. He's congratulating uh, the instructor, I think, for the pugilistic area, isn't that? Well, I think he's getting some information from the instructor. Uh, the president, of course, has a very strong interest in physical fitness, so uh, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that he will, would get out and get involved in this. I trust he won't run one of the obstacle courses. That's, that's not in the schedule either. There's the red band. Uh, oh. to, simulate the band at the end of the ride. Now these fellows, they come in on each other and they shout blood-curdling yells, don't they? I'll say they do. They, if the drill instructor didn't stop them, after they knocked the other one down, they would continue to, to beat on him because this is training for combat and combat is a, is a messy business. Here's where they get their first real uh, physical contact experience, don't they? Yes, and that's they, right. I think that they get they, to like it, too, don't they? Certainly they do. It's, the Marine Corps uh, tries to instill uh, oh boy, he really got competition one, in each one of these people. And they, they like it very much. As on Sunday afternoons when they're off, they do this sort of thing uh, then. Body contact games. It's a combination of bayonet and boxing motions. Well, bayonet carrying... Right, bandit Thanks. fighting is uh, is boxing in a sense. You, you use the same movements in bandit fighting that you use in boxing. Speaking of physical activity, you don't have a touch football game going here this afternoon, do you? <laughs> no, uh, our, our schedule wouldn't permit it. And uh, it's, it's a little out of season for us on touch football. We play uh, uh, a little soccer on Sundays. Uh, Recruits uh, recreation period. Will the uh, president be willing to stand here the rest of the afternoon and watch this? With the uh, judging from the pleasure, uh, the expression of pleasure that he has, he looks like he's enjoying it. All right. The president of the United States, General, gentlemen, I want to express my very strong appreciation to all of you this morning on behalf of the people of this country. The United States, though a young country, has an honorable and distinguished martial tradition, stretching back to the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the War of 1847, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korea. It has meant that every generation of Americans in our country's history has had to bear arms in defense of this country. In more recent years, however, our responsibility has been broader. Since 1945 and the end of the Second World War, the whole cause of freedom has depended upon the United States. We have been the keystone in the arch. So I come here today not to speak to all of you, but to get the kind of realization which uh, all of us in Washington need, which is that there are still thousands of young men in this country who are ready to take up arms in its defense. That the old corps may have been a great corps, but the new corps is just as good. That the young men who are coming off the farms and cities of this country and joining the Marines and the Navy are just as good as their fathers were in the Second War or their brothers in Korea. And that now, and in the years to come, those who oppose us, those who wish us ill, must contend with the strong determination of Americans to not only endure and survive, but also to prevail. On behalf of the people of this country, I wish to give you our strongest thanks. The Douglas Service Station dealers of San Diego County have presented highlights of President Kennedy's visit to San Diego. This 
pre-recorded program was produced by the News and Special Events Department of KFMB-TV, San Diego.